gotta catch that guy. But first, you're gonna need some upgrades. Roy, you've described this movie as a Disney film with Marvel DNA. Exactly, yeah. When it first landed on your desk, did you have any concerns about the mixing of those two at all? No, never. Uh, you know, I, I, it's funny because in the production process, I learned that Marvel works very similarly to, the, to us. Uh, I love Marvel films, and uh, the best Marvel film has big hearts. Uh, just a big heart and you know you, you fall in love with characters and it's always a great world and that's what we do with Disney. We want to build a world that you want to be in and you want to go back to. We want a story that has great themes and excitement and then we also want characters that you fall in love with. So really it, it, it seemed like it was a match made in heaven in a way. So how much of the world was developed when you came on board, when they said to the director said to you, we want you to produce this? Well, Don had already come up with the idea of San Francisco, you know, and that was partially uh, as a result of wanting to take this film into the Disney universe as opposed to the Marvel universe. And what we do in films at Disney is make these incredible worlds. So uh, that concept had already been uh, developed. Uh, I was lucky enough to have an amazing uh, production designer in Paul Felix, an amazing uh, art director of uh, environments by the name of Scott Watanabe. Uh, Scott fortuitously, and it was totally fortuitous, uh, came to the studio on my last film, Tangled, and um, came onto this film, and we didn't realize Scott is Japanese-American, he grew up in San Francisco and spent summers in Japan. So it was like, oh my gosh, we, we just fell into that. And it, it, I think the authenticity of San Francisco is reflective of, of his art, artistry. As the producer, do you see yourself part fixer and part the punter in the cinema, mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. voice at the meetings? Now, it's, it's interesting. My job, I feel, is to get the director's vision on screen. And part of that means that I have to challenge the director uh, and I have to champion the director. Um, and, you know, sometimes I champion them for the, you know, in front of the studio. Uh, sometimes I go into a, a side room and say, guys, now I know this is your vision, but this is where you need to go. Uh, this is what you've said. Are you sure? But I never usurp what they want. You know, it's always about what they want. And uh, I get it for them. The directors, Don Hall and Chris Winwood, they did an awful lot of meetings with robotics experts right, and all exactly. for Baymax. Were you at those meetings? Uh, early on, no, I was not. But then I got to meet some of those guys later in the process. And it was great because uh, Chris Atkinson, who was kind of the major roboticist that really influenced us, uh, came from Carnegie Mellon. He was working in soft robotics. That was the idea. He came to our rap party and saw Baymax and was overjoyed because for him it meant he was gonna get more funding. So it was great. Art helped science, now science is helping art. Whoa, 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 do not move. Behind the line, please. Hey, Wasabi, this is my brother, Hero. Hello, Hero, prepare to be amazed. Catch. Wow. Laser-induced plasma? Oh, yeah. With a little magnetic confinement for uh, ultra precision. Wow, how do you find anything in this mess? Uh, I have a system. There's a place for everything, everything in its place. Need this! You can't do that! Well, as much as the movie has like a, a message for families and children about like the importance of relationships and all, mm. I thought that it was aimed as well at kids about pursuing a career in science as well. Was that yeah. on the agenda? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, what I love about this film is these are smart, smart kids. And, you know, they are pursuing their superpowers through intelligence. You know, it's about intelligence, it's about science, it's about technology. And one of the things that I'm most proud about, um, there was a woman who brought her child to the film and about 20 minutes into the film, leaned over to her mom and said, Mom, I want to go to college, which I think is extraordinary. In terms of 
working with the directors to get Baymax the look of him? Did you at all think at any stage, he's too simplistic looking? No, you know, it's really interesting because part of the design process here had to do with anime and had to do with manga. Uh, you know, that Japanese aesthetic that we were trying to, to filter into our world uh, worked, I think, really well, and his design, in many senses, is is reflective of, I think, some of the stuff and work of Miyazaki, who is our big hero. Um, he kind of reminds me of Totoro in a little bit, uh, but you know, ultimately, I was never uh, concerned because. I think that kind of minimalism actually plays well into animation. Well, that's what blew me away <clears throat> watching it. It's like his face is so simple, and yet you project so much onto him. Well, when you have animators at the caliber that our animators are, they're a phenomenal. Those guys are phenomenal. And they used to talk about uh, Baymax as not animation, but animation. The idea of as little as you can to get the emotion that you want. What's interesting is that I think people actually in the animation put a lot of themselves into Baymax, so they totally understand where he's coming from with very little. In terms of the animator's work, I couldn't get over how many references to other movies and characters that they've peppered throughout Big Hero 6. Have you a definitive list or a number of how many there are in it? Are you talking about the, the cookies that we yeah, have in the there? Yeah, cookies are Easter eggs all we over the place. We do have a definitive list, and I'm glad to say that no one has come up with all of them yet. So I think that's probably going to wait for the DVD, because I think anyone who wants to get all of them is going to have to go frame by frame in the DVD to find them. You might offer them a job as well if they could get them all. Well, if they can find them all, and, uh, and particularly if they can find them all and not actually slow the DVD down, I'd be really, really impressed. Your job involves having a lot of plates in the air at the one time. And yeah, I'm asking this from my own point of view, from my own life. How do you manage the stress of it and deal with the stress of it? You know, oddly enough, um, I enjoy the stress. You know, I, and it's weird, because there's good stress and there's bad stress. And when I have a lot of plates in the air, as long as, if, as, long as those plates are all about one project, I'm happy. Uh, I find I get stressful when I'm, uh, you know, managing two or three projects. If I'm managing one project, and I've got things in story, I've got things in layout, I've got things in animation, it's not a problem, because I know where it's all going. Uh, and and I, f I love it. I absolutely love it. So if you could give me one piece of advice for dealing with stress, what would it be on my little projects? You know, I go home, you know, go home and forget about it. it I mean, the more you, you I, can, I will say that in, in this production process, there was probably, I would say, f 12 days that I went home and worried. Uh, but the more you can get away from that, the healthier you'll be. And you come into work and the challenges are there, you just keep going. This has been our Baymax moment. Uh, Ex yes, yeah, I hope you're satisfied with your care. I am satisfied with Excellent. my care. Excellent. Great Excellent. to meet you. Great to meet pleasure. you, my pleasure. Harry baby. Harry baby.